Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 726. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about New York legalizing cannabis in 2020. And this is a couple of articles that I want to share with you, and also a quote from Governor Cuomo, who said, according to the New York Times, he said, marijuana will be legalized in New York in 2020, Cuomo vows. Wow, that's huge news because it seemed like New York had missed their legislature time to make any changes and propose legislation. We had heard that the time had gone by for it to be proposed in 2020, but apparently that's not the case. And we have an article here from theobserver.com, which says coronavirus won't stop New York from trying to legalize marijuana. And the article was written by Chris Roberts. And it says, despite the fact that New York State is on a fast track to becoming the new global epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic, and politicians are locking horns over how to best respond to the crisis, some non-virus-related government business will continue as usual, and that will include marijuana legislation, Governor Andrew Cuomo told reporters this week. We will pass a budget and address the policy items that we laid out and discussed in January, Cuomo said during a press briefing on Monday. Now, this was back in March, at the end of March. Those items include banning flavored e-cigarettes, tweaking certain cash bail reforms, and legalizing recreational marijuana. We are going to pursue all of them, the governor said. New York State has a thriving cannabis market, but despite meaningful progress in marijuana-related policy reforms, such as decriminalizing possession of small amounts of marijuana in 2019, the state still lags behind many parts of the country in not only legalizing recreational marijuana, but accommodating access to medical cannabis. Medical marijuana has been legal in New York State since 2014, but access is restricted only to seriously ill individuals meeting a list of strict criteria. As a result, there were only 98,101 eligible patients in the entire state at the end of 2018, data from New York State Department of Health shows. On the recreational side, New York doesn't allow for citizen-sponsored voter initiatives like most states where recreational marijuana is legal. Efforts last year to legalize recreational use through the normal legislative process failed, prompting many New Yorkers to take weekend trips to Massachusetts to purchase cannabis. One of the main selling points of legalizing marijuana is money, as state government could reduce spending on police enforcement and incarceration while increasing tax revenue from cannabis-related businesses, which the state will need badly when the pandemic is over. The New York City subway system, for example, could benefit hugely from a higher budget. With ridership down, a staggering 60% since the outbreak of COVID-19, the MTA is already seeking a multi-billion dollar bailout. Cuomo's proposed January budget addressed a $6.1 billion shortfall. The coronavirus crisis could add another $4 billion to the state deficit, lawmakers warned this month. And even if legislation doesn't go through, reform advocates point out Cuomo could still add cash to the budget and fulfill at least some of the wellness and social goals of legalized cannabis by expanding medical marijuana access. Medical marijuana is a public health issue, so Governor Cuomo could use executive power and federal resources further incentivizing prospective licensees to correct disparities in and around impacted areas. We Rise to Legalize, a New York City-based reform advocacy group, posted on Instagram on Tuesday. That's easy math. All right, that's the end of that article, but I also have another article to share with you, and that is about how cannabis is 
helping with coronavirus. And this was a very interesting article that one of our VIP experience members posted in our group. She found this article from the New York Post that says scientists believe cannabis could help prevent and treat coronavirus. And this was written by Lee Brown on May 21st. It says they have high hopes for a coronavirus breakthrough. A team of Canadian scientists believes it has found strong strains of cannabis that could help prevent or treat coronavirus infections, according to interviews and a study. Researchers from the University of Lethbridge said a study in April showed at least 13 cannabis plants were high in CBD that appeared to affect the ACE2 pathways that the bug uses to access the body. We were totally stunned at first, and then we were really happy, one of the researchers, Olga Kovalchuk, told CTV News. The results, printed in online journal preprints, indicated hemp extracts high in CBD may help block proteins that provide a gateway for COVID-19 to enter host cells. Kovalchuk's husband, Igor, suggested cannabis could reduce the virus's entry points by up to 70%. Therefore, you have more chance to fight it, he told CTV. Our work could have a huge influence. There aren't many drugs that have the potential of reducing infection by 70 to 80%, he told the Calgary Herald. While they stressed that more research was needed, the study gave hope that the cannabis, if proven to modulate the enzyme, may prove a plausible strategy for decreasing disease susceptibility, as well as becoming a useful and safe addition to the treatment of COVID-19 as an adjunct therapy. Cannabis could even be used to develop easy-to-use preventative treatments in the form of mouthwash and throat gargle products, the study suggested, with a potential to decrease viral entry through the mouth. The key thing is not that any cannabis you would pick up at the store will do the trick, Olga told CTV. All were high in anti-inflammatory CBD, but low in THC, the part that produces the cannabis high. The study, which has yet to be peer-reviewed, was carried out in partnership with Pathway Rx, a cannabis therapy research company, and Swish Inc., a cannabinoid-based research company. The researchers are seeking funding to continue their efforts to support scientific initiatives to address COVID-19. While our most effective extracts require further large-scale validation, our study is crucial for the future analysis of the effects of medical cannabis on COVID-19, the research said. Given the current dire and rapidly evolving epidemiological situation, every possible therapeutic opportunity and avenue must be considered end of article. All right, well, that is huge news because once again, we find that CBD, the non-THC, the part of cannabis that is therapeutic and does all kinds of things from stopping seizures and helping people sleep and has all kinds of health benefits. Once again, we see CBD being a potential health solution. Again, this is not about recreational use or getting high. This is about medicinal uses of cannabis. And that's what really excites me are the medicinal uses and especially the uses of CBD. Now, along with that, we've been seeing our favorite ETF, MJ, jump quite a bit. And we saw it jump 8% in one day, 16% in a week. And a lot of the cannabis stocks have been going crazy. Some of these companies are getting additional funding, and that means that venture capitalists are coming back, taking another look at these companies. Those that have been doing well during the coronavirus shutdown have been, of course, growing leaps and bounds because some of them were called essential businesses and were allowed to stay open. So some of them are growing as much as 30% quarter over quarter, according to one CEO I heard talking on CNBC. So the venture capitalists are back. They're loaning money or investing in these companies, and they might have a two-pronged approach. One might be to give money to a failing company, 
with the hopes that if that business does fail, they can pick it up cheaper than if they were to outright buy it. And the other is for those that are really successful to get another round of financing and get a greater percentage share ownership of the company so that going forward, if they're a big success, they own more of the business. So there's some different strategies going on here and you have to be very careful to look at the balance sheet of the companies you're investing in, how much cash they have on hand, because some companies are in very dire need of cash and may be out of business in a few months. Others have been doing very, very well, are growing leaps and bounds and might be great investments now for the next three to five years. One of the easiest ways to take advantage of that is in a diversified way by owning MJ. That way you have over 50 companies that you're investing in. You get a little bit of a dividend too while you're waiting and you don't have all your risk in just a few companies. So we're excited to hear that New York may broaden its legalization. It's looking at it. It looks like Governor Cuomo wants to do that in 2020. That would be huge news for cannabis. And it also looks like there's a possible future with CBD and therapeutic treatments of the coronavirus. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And don't forget my full wealth mentoring library of all of my podcasts. It's not available anywhere, but on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.